It is GED question of the daytime, and today we have a algebra problem that's actually really simple. And students panic a lot of the times when they see algebra. It looks like visual vomit to them, I joke. Um, and so you might be already panicking, feeling that fear rising. But I just want to assure you that this is actually not even really an algebra problem. It's more of an arithmetic problem in disguise. Let's take a look at what I mean here. It says evaluate the expression below for x equals 5. And then I have this rather disgusting looking expression here, 2x squared minus 1 all over x plus 2. And they, if um, I didn't have the wording up here at the top, if they just gave me this expression, um, it'd be, you know, I would agree with you to panic. <laughs> like, what do I do? All these X's and da da da, and I don't remember. And did I even learn this? And okay. But what I want to point out to you is even though this looks like an algebra problem right now with all these X's, it's not really because of this phrase. Evaluate the expression below for X equals 5. And so what we have here, if they tell us X equals 5, our mystery has been solved. There's the variable x usually is a mystery, something we don't know about. Um, and so if it's, you know, a mystery, we have to leave it as a letter. But our mystery has been solved. We know what this letter x stands for. It uh, stands for 5. And so the very first thing we're going to do is what's known as substitution. We're going to rewrite the exact expression we see from, a top, from up top. So I see a 2 up top, so I write a 2 here. But what we're going to do is we're going to substitute out all our x's for their known value. So we know that x is equal to 5. And so where we once saw x, we're going to substitute in a 5. Now, a couple things I want to talk about. The first thing, notice how I put it in parentheses. Why? Well, parentheses in math class, you might know, mean to multiply. Similarly, when you see a number like 2, and a letter like X shoved together with nothing in between them. See them how they're like shoved together like this? That means the two things are multiplying. So when I go to substitute in the 5, I will put it in parentheses to remind myself to multiply that 2 and that 5. Okay. Now I see a square up top, so I'll keep my square. I see a minus, so I'll keep my minus. I see a 1, I'll keep my 1. The only thing that changes when you're substituting is your variable. Now, I did have an x up here, but I don't have to call him x anymore. He's not a mystery. I'll turn my x into 5. And that's the other thing I wanted to point out about substituting. Notice, when I put these 5s in for x's, I don't have an x here anymore. It's just like if you had a substitute teacher in class. If you had a substitute teacher in class, they would be there and your teacher would not be there. So when you substitute in 5 for x, 5 is now there and x is not there anymore. You've substituted him. You've swapped him out for an equivalent value. Okay, and I keep my plus and I keep my 2. And now, as you can see, this is not an algebra problem anymore. This is just an ugly order of operations problem. Um, this is just arithmetic to do and with more than one step, so I'll follow my order of operations. Remember, the order of operations, the first thing you do is groupings. The next thing you do is exponents. After that, multiplication and its inverse, and then addition and it, its inverse. So let me grab up a different color pen because a lot of students forget this. Remember that among the groupings, it's not just things in parentheses that are grouped. Also, the top and bottom of fractions make natural groupings. And so I am going to work everything on top and everything on the bottom of my fraction. So let's take a look at the top of my fraction first, my numerator. So looking up here, there's still a lot of operations to do. You might say, which one should I do first? A lot of students say, Kate, you should do uh, the 5 first because the 5 is in parentheses. And I'm like, what am I going to do to the 5? There's no operation inside these this parentheses. It's just one single number. So actually, uh, the we, there are no groupings up top, except for that the entire thing is a grouping. So I'm going to start with the exponent. And so I will have to start with 5 squared. 5 squared, and let me do that a different color so you can see what I mean. So I'm going to square my 5 first. So if I were to square 5, I'd get 25. Now, really careful when you do order of operations problems. I usually go down 
but I just ran out of space. So I'm going to keep my 25 in parentheses because it still needs to multiply with the 2. I haven't done that yet. I haven't done the minus 1 yet. So you just keep everything you haven't done and you just keep on carrying it over. Now, this bottom grouping, 5 plus 2, it's a totally separate grouping down here on the bottom. So I can just go ahead and do that, and I will. Uh, so I get 7 down there. Now, obviously, there's still more work to do in my grouping up top. I should multiply before I add or subtract. And so 2 times 25 is 50. And remember that you should write down everything you have not yet done, even if it seems like kind of a pain. So I have 50 minus 1. I haven't dealt with my minus 1. And I haven't dealt with my over 7 yet. Okay? Now, one last thing to do in that grouping up top. I still have that 50 minus 1, so I'll do that next. 50 minus 1 is 49. And 49 is still, because I have not yet dealt with it, over 7. And now I'll do this for my last step. You might say, Kate, I haven't even learned fractions yet. Remember that a fraction bar means the same as divide. If it divides perfectly, you don't even have a fraction. Does 49 divide perfectly by 7? Heck yeah, it does. 49 divided by 7 is 7. And this entire ugly thing just comes to 7. That's very nice. And you should be aware that you can also type this entire expression um, into your GED calculator. So just hold on one second. The answer here is 7, but I just want to show you. Right here from the very beginning, if you had just done your beautiful substitution step, remember our very first step, our substitution step was when we um, plugged in our numbers for our x's. If you had just done that one step, you could have gotten away with just that. Because if this problem came up on the GED, guess what? You would have a calculator. And your TI30XXXS, that's the GED calculator, can handle this entire expression exactly the way it looks. It's going to be super important that you're in the right mode, though. So make sure you hit mode. Okay, arrow around until you're over the word math print. And press enter to select math print. And now clear to get out of that mode screen. And now you can type this entire expression into your calculator. First thing I would want to do is get my fraction bar going. So I would press the N over D button. N over D will get that fraction. And now you can type that entire expression up top, parentheses and all, two open parentheses, five close parentheses, squared, remember that's the X squared button, minus one, and then you arrow down to go down here and put five plus two. And if you type it all into your calculator correctly, you will still get that answer of seven. Great. So if you have any questions about this, be sure to uh, ask them in the comments. And uh, we're going to look at an even trickier problem next time.